Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is currently November 1st at 12.46 in the morning, and this is Dr. Spurs, for those of you who don't know me, and I am going to be bringing you two replays tonight on the new computer. Oh, yeah. Uh, after I got this thing about a week ago, and uh, after a few test runs and put her through some trials and tribulations, she's uh, ready to go. Uh, I don't yet have the quality as super amazing fantastic as I would like it. I've been fiddling around with a bunch of settings uh, all the time. Recording these short little like 20 second clips and saying, oh yeah, that looks like garbage and oh yeah, that looks, that looks a little better. Uh, just tirelessly trying to get my computer to show you the best quality games that I possibly can. Uh, now that my computer can actually uh, run it at super high qualities. But, um, thank you for waiting for the better qualities. Hopefully it was worth it. Hopefully I can get it into super high, super amazing awesomeness. But until then, we shall settle for what I hope is an improved quality. Otherwise, uh, all this waiting's been kind of in vain. But let's go ahead and jump into the first game I have tonight. But if you're watching this on YouTube, it may not be, uh, all in the same night. I'm bringing you two, as you saw, and I'm sure I said before. But... Yeah, Halloween just ended. I mean, it was about 46 minutes ago. And the first game in the spirit of the November season I will be bringing to you is a game between two WIU players on our team. The bitter rivalry between Gordor and Dubside. Dubside will be the green zerg spawning in the lower right hand position, and Gordor shall be spawning in the close air spawns above him as the orange Protoss. These two have, uh... I mean, they're, they're good buddies, and uh, they've always had that kind of bitter rivalry, I'm sure, as far as StarCraft goes, but even if they aren't, I'm going to paint that story anyway, just to make it more interesting. Uh, Gordor has always been trying to um, get a leg up on Dubside, because Dubside is a league ahead of him, though most of the games uh, do go to Dubside. And this might be one more, but I'm, uh, I'm not entirely sure. It was not specified to me who wins this game. So I'm here to see what happens just as you are, ladies and gentlemen. That was open for far too long. Hopefully you don't, like, back the video up and then look at this number right there, because that would ruin the surprise. It, it didn't ruin the surprise for me. So I'm going to assume... Oh my gosh, I've been staring at nothing. I'm going to assume that it hasn't ruined the surprise for you. But... This, the beginning of the game is always the weirdest. It's just like not as much to talk about, but we, we'll see a 14 hatch out of the Zerg here. Very standard, very normal, nothing crazy here. Uh, Zerg do loves them, so the, the 14 hatch, super fast, fast expand. In my opinion, a lot of Zergs kind of need to. Um especially in today's meta, and the Zerg Scout for Dubside will be arriving at Gordor's base, just kind of chilling on the ramp, and he will see that there is a forge on the low ground, so it will be a forge fast expand out of our Protoss player, and I am eagerly awaiting the response from Dubside, uh, if he decides to go for like a two base all in, or if he tries to take another third, I am not sure, but it should be a good one. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sent me this replay. This one probe is about to die here. He's running for his life away from the straw. Oh, he did die! Oh, a little bit of... A little bit of misstep there. A little bit of... A few probe parts were left behind. As that probe did meet his fate, and the, the drone will be blocking this nexus. What a... What a nexus block. It's, like, almost as bad as a cock block, but not really. I mean, a nexus block, you know, as you saw, he just, just kind of poked him out of the way. I was like, hey, dude, you want to move over? I think that's cool, but, like, when you get cock blocked, y you can't really say, like, hey, dude, move over, because you're already in a super awkward situation, it sounds like, if you have to tell a dude to, to move over the dude that's cock blocking you. Anyway, that was a really weird scenario that I somehow roped myself into. There are a few larvae here chilling out in the newly expanded hatchery. We do have a gas geyser and the speed upgrade on the way, just now beginning for Dubside, so we will be seeing some speedling play. Always fantastic, a good choice. Speedlings are just so fast, can really abuse their mobility. The first Fowentown cannon has started. Mm, I almost yawned there, but I kind of held it back, but mm, it's trying again. 
who you ever have that feeling where you, you almost yawn but you don't um hopefully you do and i'm not just crazy but this probe is long distance mining because he is a trooper the queen is going to pop here and a few zerglings just for some map control uh not too many we do see dubside has pulled off of his gas geyser to mine the extra minerals so he will not be going for that faster layer tech Ah, there was, there was Eon that I was waiting for. Not that this game is boring. No, this game isn't boring at all. It's just because it's the first five and a half minutes doesn't mean it isn't interesting. I mean, look at this massive amount of Zerglings. Like, I didn't, I didn't think there'd be this massive amount of Zerglings um, coming out this soon. I would have thought maybe Dubsed would have droned up just a little harder, but it is interesting to see. Uh, who he is uh, six workers behind. So hopefully these Zerglings do pay for themselves. They have just become Speedlings, and they're arranging themselves outside of this cafe. There are only two zealots and a photon cannon, so there could be quite a bit of damage on the way. Here come the zerglings. They will be sweeping around in the back, and those poor probes are a little undefended. A uh, slight miss micro here by a dub side, but he will hold position in the mineral line and get all of these drone kills at the expense of a few zergling kills, but that might have been worth it. Let's take a look at the workers killed. It is nine workers killed for dub side. He has evened up the food, or the harvester count, rather. So this Ling, uh, early Ling production has already, in my opinion, paid for itself. I mean, if you look at the resources lost tab, it is a telltale sign that he is that it has paid for itself. He has cut the worker count down, and he is switching to 11 drones. Oh my goodness. So he definitely feels very safe right now. Uh, does not feel any kind of impending doom or timing attack. Is on the way that he can't, you know, prepare for in the next, like, 30 seconds. There are only three zealots here to hold down the fort, but I think it's plenty, as, um, these are all the links dub said, really. As to its name, I am used to staying up at 12.30. I am used to staying up till 5. I don't know why I'm yawning. Maybe it's because I do stay up till 5. We do see Gordor is trying to get his expansion off the ground. He has retransferred some probes down there to try to get it paying for itself. This is a tight wall in, so the poor probe does have to go the long way around. But a smart choice by Gordor uh, to make sure that he limits the capability of the runbys, as we have already seen. And we do see Dubside picking up his third now. And I like this. And I'm going to tell you why. I like it because he got that... Um, he really knocked the harvester count down for Gordor, and uh, brought brought Gordor on his level. If I if Dubsed would have kind of grabbed this third, which just got scouted by the way, but if he would have grabbed this third without um, this kind of ling pressure, without uh, getting those uh, probe kills, it would have been a little risky in my opinion. Um, if uh, and that's uh, if Gordor would have done uh, a timing attack, I think it would have been very powerful against. Uh, that kind of uh, third with that harvester count he was at, but because Dubside cut the harvester count down a little bit, uh, the Nexus is now a darker color, but because he cut the harvester down uh, and really slowed down his opponent, I think that is a safe choice on the third, which will be finishing here shortly. And no sight, we do have a lair tech has completed, and I totally whiffed spotting the Nidus network, which is trying to go down, but Gordor has all of these pylons in position, but he has not noticed it yet. Uh, he does not see on the minimap that, oh, never mind, he does. He's warping in three zealots, they should definitely be able to clean this up with ease, and there's no way to cancel a Nidus worm, sadly. It will finish just in time for its untimely death. So Gordor did spot that. That could have been very devastating if Zerglings had access to the main uh, mineral line. He did keep these zealots here just in case there would have been a run by in the natural. And all of these lings just popping out of that Nidus network. You know, going home with sad looks on their faces. They're like, I don't know. They're those kids at the t-ball game that didn't win. Like, nobody keeps score at a t-ball game. But, I mean, they, they know they didn't win. The other team was just so much better, and, you know, their parents always told them, you're gonna be a winner, and you're gonna travel through the Nidus network, and then they, you know, got stomped and didn't get to go through the Nidus network, and they're just sad kids, you know? And there is a warp prism on the way. Uh, plus one attack is about to finish right as these zealots get to the uh, mineral line, so this could be incredibly devastating as four zealots uh, do really just tear up uh, drones, and they will be forced to walk with... Five more zealots, so there are nine here in the main. This is this is an outrageous number of zealots. They will be doing uh, massive damage uh, 
Yeah, starting with this queen, that is a huge loss already that will cut down the uh, larva injects. There are more zealots coming in from the main, or natural rather, and the hydralisk then will be focused as well. And no response. Finally, we do see some zerglings on the way. Uh, a little bit of a delay here as a third structure will be taken down before the uh, zerglings kind of got to the fight. And it looks like uh, Dubsad is short on uh, units here. So he will be in a lot of trouble as he... I don't think he has enough Zerglings to deal with this massive number of Zealots. And uh, no, it doesn't... It looks like he will not. Some ro A singular Roach has just popped as well as some Overlords. And this Roach will try to boss it up. And it looks like he's working, kind of. Uh, he did just, uh, just die. Four or five more Roaches did join the fray after they cleaned up that Zealot in the main. And... It looks like Dubside will hold, but that drop is very devastating. There are four, five more Zealots here, uh, and they will be doing more massive damage as the Roaches are still in the natural. The third was even sniped in all of that mayhem. The units that were warped in with this proxy pylon were uh, walked over here and sniped the third, so absolutely massive damage with that three-pronged attack. Uh, walking the zealots into the main, uh, warping them into the na uh, warping them into the main, and walking them into the natural. Uh, it was just incredibly devastating. We still have this uh, this zealot here. He will be getting uh, five drone kills to his name. And now the units lost tab is a whole new story, as well as the harvest account. Uh, Gordor has evened it up uh, again. Uh, actually, really cutting. Uh, Dubside's drone count very low. The third is being attacked once again, but these roaches should be able to save it. So uh, a little bit of a lost cause with these zealots, in my opinion, as they just won't do the damage that they were intended to do. But that is okay. You can go ahead and sack zealots anyway. Oh yeah. I feel like that should be a song. And I really think a Nidus network right here would be fantastic. Um... I don't know if... There's another drop going down here. Uh, uh, Dubside really hasn't taken any measures to kind of deal with this War Prism drop, other than just kind of uh, sending roaches in to reinforce, but he will just, you know, say screw it and try to push up into the main here, and he's got to be careful he doesn't get his army force field in half, and it uh, looks like uh, Gordar will just go ahead and s just completely deny access, and a little bit of a uh, miss rally here, all these hydras don't actually feel like they want to take part of the fight unless they're using their claws, but the drop has been cleaned up, and the, um, cannon has been sniped on the front, and I don't believe there are enough roaches here, especially since they're targeting down this gateway instead of the army, uh, they might have had a chance if they would have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the army, but they focused down the gateway instead, and there is a large number of stalkers here, and they will chase down, uh, only one more roach. Uh, they will not chase them to the ends of the earth, they will stop at a reasonable manner. A Colossus Den has finished and three more gateways are being thrown down. Dubside is floating a tremendous amount of money and there is a singular zealot with four kills now who was walked over to the third so that has got to be very irritating. I'm sure Dubside is pulling his hair out at the fact that you know these singular zealots are just doing so much damage as they're being walked over but there are hydras on the field finally uh, after that uh, Den was sniped so often, but Dubside is down to 25 Harvesters, and that is huge, 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 huge at 16 minutes. Uh, he really needs all the Harvesters he, he, he can get, all these drones, uh, just all of... This, it's just been a huge uh, casualty list here. 26 drones have been destroyed and murdered in just terrible, terrible ways by Gordor, whereas only 11 that we saw in the beginning from Dubside... And he hasn't really gone through a period of uh, hard droning, except for just now, when I wasn't actually looking. So his harvester count is back up to speed. Hopefully his larva count has not suffered too much. We do see this warp prism coming in to do just a little bit more poking and try to secure this third behind any kind of aggression. And with this third, I would definitely say Gordor has the advantage, as any uh, race that is on the same number of bases, or more than a Zerg, is definitely a winning race, so Dubside really needs to make something happen here. He does have a huge supply lead uh, at about 30, and I really think his army could take uh, Gordor's Gordor still only has that plus one attack, whereas Dubside has 1-1, one, one. so as long as he's careful and manages these drops, uh, Dubside should be f Oh, those are Dark Templar. Is there an Overseer? I don't see an Overseer. Well... I believe some Skedios are in order. Skedios of the uh-oh variety. 
as there are Dark Templar and there are on the loose, there are even some in the third, and there is no sign of a response out of Dubside. He has really, uh, there is an Overseer back here, and I'm really surprised it isn't uh, helping out his buddies. Um, there we go. He finally did get Vision, and floating it over here to clean up that one. But the third will be denied again, and there are only 20 harvesters now. Uh, that, oh my goodness, that is a painful number of workers killed to see. Um, that is just so many drones, so many drones. And surprisingly, uh, Dubside's food count uh, wasn't that far behind um, Gordor's, despite all of those worker losses. But now that these Archons are on the field... It's looking like uh, a really bad day to be Dubside. Uh, he has lost so many workers. He is struggling to keep his third. And uh, I I think those few opportunities he had to push are now long gone. Gordor has uh, turned into a production powerhouse. kind of, Well, kind of. As powerhouse as you can get on about one and a half bases. Which he seems to be operating on. And Dubside is going to try to make something happen by moving into this third. If he can deny this third, he can definitely uh, put himself in a good position. But these Archons are just going to go to town on anything Dubside throws at him. Uh, it's going to get ugly here. 2-2 two, two upgrades are done for the Zerg. Whereas 2-0 are done for the Protoss. And it looks like this is going to be a fight. And I don't know if this is such a good idea. Maybe if he focuses down the Archons, he will kill one. And the Archons will go to town and totally soften up this huge army so what was once the mighty zerg fortress is now a soft gooey ball of zerg flesh to be I don't know, eaten by protoss I'm, I'm assuming protoss eat zerg i'm just assuming everybody eats zerg and that one hydralisk was a boss and totally took out a zealot before he died but now double side is kind of at the ropes here he has no harvesters no army gordor is continuing to pump units so, even the Colossus have arrived on the field. The supply count has jumped into the favor of Gorodor. And, oh my goodness, this one Overseer. I mean, he must have, like, a peace treaty going, a ceasefire between all these Stalkers and himself. He's just like, come on, guys, I just, just want to oversee. And there are more um, Dark Templars here in the th hidden third, well, fourth now. And uh, more Dark Templars will be coming up to deny the once was third. They will even be walking past this Overseer and Hydra, unfortunately. And these Dark this Dark Templar harass play, like the singular proxy pylon, has really, really done some amazing things here. Like, uh, more on the disgusting side of amazing. Just like, wow, you can do that? Like, really? And this this really makes it, it makes it hard to, you know, not make a case for how Protoss are OP right now. That one um, Dark Templar did not actually kill the Spine Crawler or the Spore Crawler, so he will have been cleaned up. But there are more DTs in the main, continuing to do massive amounts of damage. There are only a few Hydralisks, two run around, sixteen are being uh, uh, morphed in here. But we do have two Col four Colossus now uh, with Thermal Lance upgrade and Colossus. Mm. Man, if there's anything a Colossus loves on a Saturday morning when he is watching his favorite cartoons, it is a nice big old bowl of Hydralisk without any milk. That is how the Colossus roll. That is their favorite snack, is Hydralisk. 